Yeah, hi guys. Uh, today's going to be a tough video for me. I promised myself I'd do this one, but it's making me a bit anxious to do it. My childhood was not a good one. Uh, there were problems with it. My father, whose name is Barry, hence the B is for Barry in this vlog, was a brutal man. He was a rapist. He was a uh, violent against his children. He was psychologically sadistic. It was a rough time for us and particularly for my mother before she left him in the early 60s. Even though she did, he did keep coming back. There were no stalker laws, there were no apprehended violence orders or anything like that at the time. And in 1965, by lying to the courts, he got custody of my brother and I. And now this story today is me going back to the places where a lot of very bad things in my childhood happened. I'm gonna be talking about them. I'm also gonna be talking about the two places saved me. Two sanctuaries I found, two places of learning and two places of weird wisdom that I found while I was a child and a teenager living in Liverpool, New South Wales. And that's where we're going now. It didn't turn out like that. It didn't turn out to be a story about my childhood and the horrible things that happened to me in Liverpool. It turned out to be something much more. It turned out different. The story changed. And this is how it happened. Once upon a time. to Liverpool I felt strange because I didn't feel strange. 17 years ago I went back there and it triggered my PTSD with a lot of fear. This time the reaction was different. From the train station I walked across the road to the railway hotel which is part of a Sydney phenomenon they call the early opener. Early openers are pubs that open early so that shift workers or people with drinking problems can socialise and kill their brain cells at breakfast time. I planned to film from across Scott Street, but four guys were drinking in the open air area in front of the pub. They used short sentences as they yelled at one another using the two major four letter words as punctuation. I was certain they wouldn't be happy with a YouTuber aiming a camera in their direction. Going with plan B, I took footage from behind the pub up on the footpath of the road bridge crossing the Georges River. I had my lavalier mic running, but the traffic noise overwhelmed the audio. I talked about the Saturday afternoons my brother and I had spent behind the pub in my father's FJ Holden ute, waiting until 8 or 9 o'clock at night for him to come out and take us home. As I spoke, it sounded like I was talking from a memorized script. In the back of my mind, I began to question the need to retell this story. My father died over a decade ago. Eight people were at his funeral. He was dust in a box remembered only by his victims. I finished recording there and then I walked up Scott Street past a couple of indigenous guys who were having a loud but interesting conversation about socialism as it related to celebrity MMA fighters. Half a century had changed Scott Street. Massage parlours and adult product shops lined the street where a laundromat, a shoe repair business and a fish and chip shop used to be. More than ever, it was the bad side of town. I started filming at a place that was important to me back in the day. This is the site of the Regal Theatre, which was previously known as the Butterfly Theatre. For four hours every Saturday, this was my babysitter. This was the place that we went to so that my father could drink down at the railway hotel. The theatre had gone through a lot of changes since I watched all those Saturday afternoon matinees, hundreds of films over the years, a lot of which I own now. When the Regal became unprofitable as a cinema, it became an amusement arcade and later it was subdivided into cheap offices before they tore the whole thing down and put up the Quest Hotel. This was a place where I learned to love cinema and to hate Elvis musicals. In my personal world, it's still a sacred place, but it didn't look the same. Strangely, the Samoan Consulate General is now right next door to it. I talked to the lovely and Mike as I filmed that generic chain hotel. But again, the passion just wasn't there. Something was building up inside me, but I didn't know what it was. It was a feeling I couldn't really put a name to. 
I walked across Liverpool towards Seacon Street where I lived with my father when I was a teenager. It was the place where some of the worst physical and psychological abuses happened. My plan was to stand outside the apartment block and talk about those abuses. But that feeling inside me kept growing. It, it wasn't even unpleasant, it was just odd. I walked through an arcade where I once worked in a delicatessen until I left an oven full of roasted rabbits to burn and Mr Townsend gave me the most polite sacking I've ever had in my life. I walked past music stores and another pub which advertised poker machines but not beer. At Macquarie Mall I stopped to do this time lapse video. A young guy who clearly had mental health issues asked me what I was doing and which app I was using. He was really polite about it so I told him and then he walked around telling random strangers that I was using Filmic Pro. I walked up the mall toward Liverpool Plaza and I began to notice things. There was a great community feel at the cafes that lined the mall. Old guys were playing chess and dominoes on the tables in the public areas and there was a permanent ping pong table set up and there were sunshades and there were people just hanging out with each other. I started feeling good. Liverpool was not the same place I grew up in. I've got to do a bit of a warning here. Please don't make this next bit about your religion because it isn't. It's about my life and my story and all the years I've worked towards coming to terms with the pain I experienced. It isn't about your beliefs and this isn't your story. I walked into the churchyard of St Luke's Church, which is a piece of Australian colonial history. It was designed by Francis Greenway, the guy who used to be on our $10 bills, and it's 200 years old next year. On the time scale of the European occupation of Australia, it's an ancient building, and in a purely secular way, I always found it a calming and serene place. As I took this shot of Western Sydney University, I asked myself three questions. What if I didn't go to Second Street? What if I didn't talk about what happened to me there? And what if I didn't need to? I stood there for a while and I decided that I didn't need to. I wasn't the terrified, traumatized teenager who lived through those horrors. I'd changed beyond all recognition since those days. And so had Liverpool. Like me, it still had problems, but we'd both grown and evolved. I looked around and I saw the place with new eyes. I was a bit hungry, so I headed to Liverpool Plaza for some comfort food while I thought things through. Liverpool had changed, as cities inevitably do. It was vigorously multicultural and a lot richer for that diversity. Yes, the beloved cinema that was a sacred place for me was gone, but there were still cinemas in Liverpool, and they still show cult movies. I felt the need for a coffee, so I went to Espresso Warriors, and I met this guy, the barista, and we talked about coffee in Liverpool for a little while. They were brewing the same beans that I buy in Melbourne from St Ali, and it really hit me hard. The place that I dreaded all my life had good coffee in it from a place I trusted. That kind of grounded the changes that I'd seen in the place for me. Forty years ago, I ran away from Liverpool, away from my father's abusive influence and the toxic, anti-intellectual and masculine monoculture that I knew in my gut was wrong. Liverpool wasn't that anymore. I felt more comfortable there than I ever had in my life. I didn't feel at home, but I felt comfortable. I didn't know whether I'd ever go back again in the future, but the thought of going back was no longer scary. Fear that had haunted me for decades blew away on the breeze. I walked on through the town, I walked through a building that had once been a department store and was now the biggest Indian supermarket I'd ever seen. It was decked out with decorations for the upcoming Diwali festival. And across the road from that was the second sanctuary of my teenage years. It had moved up the road and it was no longer tucked behind the town hall as an afterthought. It was Liverpool Library where I borrowed and read six books a week while I educated myself in my teenage years. My fond nostalgia for the place rose up inside me. I even found out there was a cool comic shop just outside the library too and that made it even better. By this stage I was in a daze. I felt lightheaded because the heavy burdens I'd carried for all those years were put down. I walked away from the bad things of the past and I felt a lot lighter for it. I walked back to the station past more colonial era buildings and headed back to the eastern suburbs where I was staying. 
And one final thing reminded me of how much things had changed in Liverpool. At the train station, I saw this sign about combating domestic violence. My past may not have been far away geographically, but it was a long time ago. So the story changed and I changed with it. I didn't expect that to happen, but life has never been predictable. Never. I learned to come to terms with my past by just going there and just thinking things through and listening to my feelings. And I'm never going to be the same again. Thanks for watching. If you like this, please tick the like button. If you'd like to see more things that I do, please hit subscribe. And please feel free to share the link. I'll be back with more content, a lot different hopefully, very soon. Take care.